What's going on guys, it's Proto. Today's Tooltip Tuesday is over tactical emergency casualty care. A lot of good information coming, so let's get to it. Because the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Alrighty guys, today is Tuesday, and that means it's another Tooltip Tuesday. Um, for this one I've got another PowerPoint. I promise I tried to make this to not be death by PowerPoint, and if you don't know what that is, um, it's just when you go over a PowerPoint from beginning to end and that's all that you do. I need to change the battery in my camera. So, stand by please. Alrighty, I'm back. Um, sorry about that. So, um, like I said, I'm not trying to make this death by PowerPoint. I'm trying to make this pretty quick. Um, so let's get to it. Uh, this is going to be an overview of the, I called it the civilian side of TCC, um, TCCC, so Tactical Combat Casualty Care. Um, the one that I'm going to be going over today, I tried to make a good mixture of not only information for first responders, but also for just civilians. Um, I did that because I have a mixture of um, law enforcement people that follow this page, as well as, um, I should say, more first responders. I have more than just law enforcement following this page, um, but I have a lot of civilians that follow this page as well. So that's why I did this. Um, tactical emergency casualty care is, however, an offset of uh, tactical combat casualty care, which was designed for the military. So what are we doing today? We're going to have an introduction of what TECC is. We're going to go over the basics. I'm taking a really an 8 to 10 hour day and I'm shoving it into about 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different loadouts, and then we're going to conclude after that. So, what is TECC? It's a branch of tactical combat casualty care, but for first responders and civilians. Uh, like I said, um, I'll, I'll link the website at the end, but it's c-tecc.org. Um, they have guides for not only first responders, but civilians. Um, TECC is a class and certification course that is sponsored by the National Registry of EMT, so the NREMT. Um, it's focused on casualty care in a pre-hospital setting or an active violence scene. Um, it's not care under fire. It's not, um, you know, you're at a war zone dealing with this. This is just um, something that's pre-hospital, so in the field, not in a hospital setting. Um, most likely in an actively violent scene. Um, a shooting, a stabbing, a car accident, um, a fall. There, there's a lot of different things that can happen um, where this information can be useful. Uh, no, prior medical, no prior medical knowledge is needed. Uh, it does help, though, knowing some of the terminology and just knowing really how the body works um, is super important for this. So here's the basics. First, I'm going to start off with a few things. I'm not an instructor in this yet. Um, that's coming hopefully soon ish um this is not the full training like i said this is a 10 hour 8 to 10 hour course and i'm bumping it down to hopefully 20 minutes um i hold no liability in just providing this information to you um if you do something stupid um if you do something wrong if you do something that's out of your scope or out of your practice or out of your abilities that's not my fault um that's you most likely being stupid um the term casualty will be used in this quite often. Um, it's going to be synonymous with injured person. So going down towards the bottom of the slide, you'll see that this has a different mindset and objective than TCCC. Like I said, this isn't care under fire. This isn't you know being in a battle, uh, a gun battle in a war zone um, where you have you know guys taking rounds, but you also have injured people and. Um, trying to take care of that where you have also designated medics and things of that nature um, like I said down there TCCC so TCCC is what it's called um, is directed towards the military so the goals of TECC is to stop a threat if you're in the hot zone um, treat casualties if you're in the warm zone and instruct and treat others if you're in the cold zone so the hot zone is an active uh, scene with violence or a threat um, and I'll go over that I'll go all over all these a little bit more in the next couple slides. Uh, the warm zone, you have a possibility of an active, of active violence or a threat. Uh, and the cold zone, there's no active violence or threat. 
and that's kind of when everything's kind of done or you are so far separated from it that you don't have to worry so the hot zone as a civilian be cautious of engaging um, with the suspect during an active shooting and i say that because of the arvada colorado shooting um basically i believe it was at a um box store uh, I, I believe it was like a sporting goods store but I, i'm not 100 percent sure um a guy rolled up with an ar started popping off rounds good civilian dropped the bad guy with his personal weapon good guy went over to clear the rifle as pd arrived pd then shot and killed the guy that was holding the rifle because he was standing over a body um it's that that's that is a terrible situation all around um so also with that see also positive identification make sure you positively identify who you're going to shoot um god forbid you shoot you know an undercover officer that just shot you know a mass murderer um or a serial killer you know, there, there's so many different things that can happen um i'm not saying not to engage i'm just saying in reality positively identify your target um with the hot zone if you are a first responder uh your goal is to stop the threat and help subjects treat themselves so helping them move to cover um do some self-extrication so telling them hey if you can walk just leave um and self-treat there are gonna be times to where yeah they've got a massive um hemorrhaging there they're you know they're shot in the femoral artery um you can tell them hey put your tourniquet on you know do treat yourself keep your mind in it and we'll go over how that kind of works uh, later the warm zone stress is still viable but may not be present uh, so you're you know you engaged with subject or you are in building a where the uh, suspect was the active shooter was or whatever that may be was um, so you're in a subject has now moved to building c that's the last known position lkp um i just did that so everything would fit on the slide uh you want to make sure that one you still are aware of what's going on um it's not a cold zone the threat is not gone it's still present uh but it's far away it's not nearby you're able to treat more um you can extricate uh a lot more uh easily at this point um but you can also have a higher uh treatment uh you can treat more people you can do a little bit more uh treatments I'm kind of stuttering because i'm trying not to use a lot of um medical terminology i'm trying to to make this a little bit easier to understand if you don't know a lot of the medical stuff uh and then we're going to go a little bit further down into this uh, to where let's say the casualty has a weapon let's say you are in you know the box store and an officer gets shot or you know other good samaritan get shot and they have a weapon work on getting the weapon away from them um because they might have an altered mental status and they might not realize hey this is a person trying to help me i was just shot they're trying to help me not trying to hurt me uh you don't want to have that essentially um civilian on civilian or good guy on good guy violence happen um which could have been mitigated with a little bit slower reaction to just trying to take the weapon from them hopefully that makes sense and then you have the cold zone there's no active threat or there's no acts of violence going on um the suspect is dead they have left in a helicopter and they're in mexico by now um, at this point you really want to focus on the multi-casualty triage um, you have the red yellow green and black scale red you're going to treat immediately yellow is hey get this guy next green they can probably walk around or they've already treated themselves and minor injuries have them walk that's what they call the walking wounded uh, and black is usually dead um, this is from the smart triage system i don't remember what smart stands for um, but it's i'll say the 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 standard of what most places use and then with this you also want to extract to medical personnel and to the medical center at this point you're really, see fo really focusing on um, preventing death and moving them to a place where their lives can be saved. In reality, you're not going to save a life. You're not going to um, 
fix an arterial bleed out in the field. Um, that's going to need to go going. They are needing to go to a medical center and actually get surgery. And that is what save their life. You will just prevent their death. So March, March is an acronym. It stands for massive hemorrhaging, airway, respirations, circulation, hypothermia, and head injury. Uh, so with the massive hemorrhaging, it's just a lot of bleeding. So with that, you're going to want to stop it with a tourniquet or packing in pressure airway. Um, do they have a pain in airway? Can they talk to you? Is there something in it? Um, respirations, are they breathing? If so, and how well? Uh, with the circulation, is blood going round and round, or is there a less obvious issue or an internal issue? Um, there's a, a type of injury where you can have something that's, you know, terrible. You can have a fully exposed femur fracture, um, which is really painful can be deadly ish there's a lot of things that can go on with that but you might have missed the sucking chest wound or the knife that's in the lower uh, back of them um, which could be really the thing that kills them um, that femoral break is just causing them a lot of pain and it's scary and that's what you're looking at uh, hypothermia um, people will go into shock. Hypovolemic shock is going to be what's most common in a shooting. Um, people losing a lot of blood. The body goes into shock because it's not able to pump that blood. Um, so you need to treat for that. Or there's also a head injury. With a head injury, there's really nothing you can do. Um, if there's something stuck in the body, keep it there, tape it there, try and keep it stable. Get them to a hospital or medical facility. So, anatomy and treatment. I believe I found this on Google, and I want to say it was somewhere with Dark Angel Medical um, or the Stop the Bleed course. Um, every, time I, every time I tried to find this picture and have a link to it, I just got the picture blown up, and the link that it was actually attached to was broken. So if somebody watches this and this is your picture, reach out to me. I'll give you credit. Uh, the green zones. Those are your extremities. You're going to place a tourniquet. The red zones. Those are areas that are called junctions. You cannot place a tourniquet to stop bleeding there, so you have to pack the wound and put pressure on it. And then for those blue areas, those are going to be the trunk of your body. There is open space in there, so when you create a hole, um, you're creating negative pressure. You then get a what's called a tension pneumothorax or a collapsed lung. Um, so you need to place a chest seal or something that's called an occlusive dressing onto that to get that to stop. Uh, stop the bleed, save the life. So again, the mass is hemorrhaging. That's going to be the priority in most of these cases. Uh, you have a quick, effective usage of a tourniquet can prevent death. A slow, improper use can have fatal consequences. Uh, if you don't put that tourniquet on right, um, you can end up having them bleed out, which is the opposite of what that tourniquet's supposed to uh, do. Three phases to proper tourniquet placement. Place it properly. Prop Place it properly. Um, you want to have both the positioning and the tightness proper. A uh, good rule of thumb is if they are shot and complaining about the gunshot wound, you're going to turn that tourniquet until they start complaining about how tight that tourniquet is. Uh, you want it secure. Uh, you'll see when I do the second part of this video, there's a strap that covers the windlass. That's the thing that turns to make the tourniquet tight. Make sure you secure that and actually um, secure... Uh, the strap of the tourniquet as well and then do not under any circumstance unless you are a medical professional in a surgical setting that is going to then treat that tourniquet uh, area don't remove it there's no reason to loosen it to see if they're still bleeding if you loosen it they will still bleed just leave it there uh, you can have it on for extended periods of time and have no deficits meaning no neuromuscular damage no nerve damage anything like that um, with bleeding, you have about five liters of blood in your body. You can lose about a liter and a half. You're still fine. You're still functioning. You're a little panicky, um, but you're still awake. You're still conscious and you're still, uh, somewhat alert. You can still treat yourself. You're not out of the situation. You're not out of the fight. You're not dead. You're going to still work on staying alive. Um, any more than that, if you lose about half or any more, um, life's going to suck. You might go unconscious and, um, yeah, you better hope somebody gets you some help. Um, 
So for the wound packing, those are those junction points that we talked about in that first uh, picture. Um, you want to pack it with some type of gauze. Uh, you can use a hemostatic agent, which is something that will cause blood clotting or just normal gauze. And then you want to put pressure on it, direct pressure, hard pressure. Um, if you have a non-clotting dressing, hold the pressure there for about 10 minutes, and then you can put a pressure dressing, pressure dressing on it. The reason is you're not going to put uh, as much pressure as your whole body would with just that dressing. Uh, you can also use your whole body weight. So if it's on their leg, um, you know, upper thigh area is where um, their injury site is and it's got red arterial bleeding, red bright blood, uh, and you can't, for whatever reason, use a tourniquet because of the placement, you can place the, the wound packing material in there and then place your knee on it. It's going to suck, but it's going to suck less than being dead. Um... If you're using a hemostatic agent, um, you can hold the pressure for about five minutes and then use that uh, uh, pressure dressing. And then if the bleeding persists, consider using a tourniquet. Again, if it's in an area where you can get one on and it's a proper placement um, and proper application, think about using that. Now what's popping? We're going to go with R for this one. Um, you're going to look for a sucking chest wound and signs of attention pneumothorax, aka a collapsed lung. Um, a sucking chest wound is an opening in your thoracic uh, cavity um, that is going to create negative pressure during br breathing. Uh, to fix that in the field, you're going to use a, an occlusive dressing. It's also known as a, ch as a chest seal. Uh, you can do it yourself with Gorilla Tape or T-Rex Tape. Those two stick really well with blood. Um, and a flat, non-absorbent item. So you can use a... Uh, uh, chips bag you know a single serving chips bag you can use that um, you can you use different materials if you're gonna DIY it um, tape it on three sides leave one side open that way you can burp it when needed um, or you can use a gloved hand um, that that's gonna be the three things you can do in the field um, you can also use needle decompression um, if you are trained how to do that and you know how to do it properly, that's something that is in your scope and abilities and practice, then you follow your rules and procedures. Um, I cannot do that. With this, also you're going to look for tracheal deviation. The trachea is actually going to move. Um, and it's going to move to the side that is not being affected. So if my right lung is collapsed, everything's going to start shifting over to the left. And then you have shock. It can set in quickly, uh, especially when you have it from blood loss. Uh, main thing is you want to control the bleeding. After that, you want to be able to have all of the blood go towards the trunk. So if you can, put their feet up. Um, place them on their back and cover them with an emergency blanket. Uh, believe it or not, those little silver blankets really work. Um, after that, you know, reassess them. They've already gone into shock. They might still be decompensating. Uh, check them. Make sure they don't need to be transported immediately. Um, and then do, do an overall again. Make sure you didn't miss something. Uh, these are my references. Uh, again, the c-tecc.org. This will be in my link to the stories. Um, I'll try and link it to the actual references pages. And again, that one image, it was on Google. I want to say it was Dark Angel Medical or Stop the Bleed. Um, one of those two things. Here's me. Here's my Instagram. Here's my website. Um, website is updated somewhat regularly. Um, these slides will be on my GitHub repository. Um, that should be linked in my highlights. If not, I'll make the link. Um, so there was, I have this done in about 19 minutes. Um, that was very, very small portion of that eight to 10 hour day. Like I said, um, if you want to go through this, go to that website, see if there's anything uh, in your area. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, I'll tag some medical people in this video uh, as well. And then uh, reach out if you have any questions or you want anything. Let me know what you think about this video. I know it went by fast, but like I said, I wanted to keep this portion to about that 20 minute time frame. Uh, so now we're going to move over towards um, going over some of the gear that I have.
So let's get to it. So I have a few different things here. I have this bag, uh, and then I have two more right down here. Um, so we're gonna first go over this one. This is my iPack. This is what I carry um, at work. I also have a range one, uh, one that matches my uh, my range belt. This is Crydex. Um, I've heard good things. I haven't had to use it, thank God. So I can't tell you anything about that. Um, it's placed on your uh, belt like this um, with this little mesh side out and the plus at the top. Uh, inside, there's this little pull tab. And then you just pull. And all the contents can fall out. I have it stuck. Uh, I also keep other gear on me in my pockets. So this is my, I'm sitting, I am, you know, in a, I'm in the cold zone or the warm zone. Um, I can now take this stuff out. I have a total of four tourniquets on me. Um, this would be my fourth. This is the, again, the warm zone or uh, cold zone type deal. So, Everything dumps out. Um, there are two. My face doesn't jump in the video. So this is the little thing that holds it all together. Uh, hopefully this is in view. My camera doesn't autofocus during video, uh, so I do all this manually. Uh, this is just some braided wire, steel wire, uh, with a, a shielding around it. Uh, on the ends are usually two little um, soft black pieces. Um, those came off when I pulled it. I just got to find it. Not a big deal. Um, as you can see down here, I have a handful of different things. So these are uh, Z-Pack dressings. This is for wound packing. Uh, these do not have any hemostatic agents in it. This is just straight gauze. Uh, I have two of those. Sorry about the crinkle. I'm using a different mic. That way it's not I'm looking this way and it's not, oh, it's super quiet. Um, so those are in there. Oh, might have to blur that. Might have caught it. Um, this is a, uh, something similar to an Israeli bandage. Um, I think this is called Noleus. Uh, I took it out of its packaging. Um, I used to work at a uh, motocross track um, somewhere in the country, and we obviously did not have the cleanest environment. Um, am I worried about the risk of infection? Yes, I always am. Am I more worried about bleeding out? Yes. Uh, this is gonna be a tr pressure dressing. This is what you would use to wrap after you've packed, and I just, did here. If it's here, you should use a tourniquet. Um, but, you know, packing here, uh, and then you can wrap. Trauma shears. Um, these things are surprisingly good in terms of being able to cut through things. Um, if you have special, cool, cut through penny shears, you can use those. These just fit in that bag really well. Emergency blanket. Emergency blanket. Um, I don't, I'm not, none of these are sponsored. This is all stuff that I've bought and I, uh, I like. So if a brand is watching this, I don't care if it's your product or another product. Um, I really don't have a preference until we get the tourniquets. Uh, but again, here's that emergency blanket for treating shock. And then we have um, crappy uh, occlusive dressing, so crappy chest seals. Um, these are what holds a IV in place. Um, they were out of actual pressure or uh, chest seals, um, so we're using these in place. Again, these work; um, they just don't work the best. 
And then I have my cat tourniquet. Um, there are only a handful of tourniquets that are TCCC approved. Um, you have this, you have the soft tourniquet, you have the soft wide tourniquet, and there's a couple other ones. Uh, I choose cat. It's easy. Um, we've only seen a couple fail out in the field, um, but we don't know why the person didn't uh, keep it, and they did not, obviously, the um, fire department took the person with the crappy tourniquet, um, and so they weren't able to get it back, and they did not document what went wrong or how it went wrong. They just said it failed with no other information. So that is, is, that's what I've got in my IFAC. Um, again, it's not a whole bunch. Some of it isn't perfect, but there's that. I'm going to use this to cover my face. I gotta find those little black pieces too. Um, you get all that stuff on Amazon. Then I have this. It's a big stretcher. Uh, this is a MedSource fast stretcher. Um, it's what I was given. Uh, I think these are about $115, $120. Uh, it's just like a big blanket with some uh, hand attachments. And I think this is rated for 500 pounds, so pretty heavy. Um, I say pretty heavy. You get somebody that's a solid, you know, 280 with a full thing of gear on. Um, if for whatever reason you didn't take that off already, you should probably think about taking it off. Um, but holds really well. Then again, haven't had to use it. I will be putting it to the test though. Um, it's issued to me, so I couldn't care less if it breaks. All I have to say is, yeah, I was using it, I was training, and then it broke, and they go, okay, here's a new one. It's pretty nice. Um, then we have this. This is, again, another piece of issued equipment to me. Um, I think I put in the slide that I'm an EMT, so I get this cool bag. Uh, the stretcher, goes in this portion or an AED fits in here. Um, we don't have any AEDs yet. Um, they were all given out, so uh, I was not given one. In here, got a bunch of things. So on the side pocket, I've got two tourniquets. Then one thing that's not in there, which will be, uh, it's actually in the bag that's right here, um, is a SWAT T. Uh, it says that it can be used as a tourniquet. Um, more for kids. I would say this is good for a kid, not a full-grown adult, or a small adult. Um, if you're, if the adult is 5'2", 110 pounds, you might be able to get away with this. Um, especially if you have a larger person that would need the cat tourniquet, or whatever other type of tourniquet. This is more useful as a pressure dressing, though. Uh, and this I will probably replace with that oleus, that way it saves some room. And then in here I also have two cat tourniquets, orange cat tourniquets. I don't know where the focus is. If anybody wants to donate a camera that autofocuses, be glad to take it off your hands. Nothing in this side pouch. And then inside here is where the fun is. Uh, this backpack alone is, I think, three or $400, not including all of the kit inside of it. Um, so not including the backpack, um, everything that's in here will be about $250 to $300. Um, kind of depends on where you get it, how much you get it, and the brands of what you get. Uh, so in here, I believe this is focused enough. That looks pretty good. Um, so I've got shears and a, um, emergency blanket and I have some co-band. Um, again, this is not necessarily an IFAC. This could also be an ouchie boo boo kit. 
Um, I've got a pulse ox, uh, checking for a pulse and oxygen levels. Again, as an EMT, this is more of a medic bag. Um, four by four pads. Again, good for, uh, you can, if at minimum, if you only have this, you can try packing with this, uh, but you can use it as iPads and things of that nature. CPR mask. One of the coolest ones that I think I have is a pocket valve, valve bag mask, pocket BVM. Um, I just think things like this are cool. I'm a nerd. Uh, this is for rescue breathing. Um, I can get this to zoom in. Boom. So it, uh, you open it and then you pull it and then it becomes a valve bag mask. Bag valve mask, BVM. So there's that. Sorry for the sounds. Uh, in here are a bunch of ab pads. So I think they're five by nine pads. Um, there's folded up for uh, wounds, wrapping, and such. Um, I could go into a lot of detail about this stuff. I'm trying not to. And here I have some more of those pads and I have some Narcan. Here are the uh, hyphen vented chest seals. So when I was talking about uh, having to burp, this has a vent to where it should automatically do the burping. The burping is when pressure needs to be released. And we'll go back to this. Again, I apologize if this is a little bit out of focus. I'm trying my best to do this by hand and my computer's, I don't know, five to six feet away. And then in this one, we have some more Z-Pack dressing. Z. And then we have the Oleus bandages. Uh, this is the package that it would come in. Uh, so this is the type of packaging that it comes in. It's vacuum sealed. Again, it takes up room in my IFAC. I, at that point, I don't care. Just give me some help. So there's that. Now, there are a few things that aren't in here um, that I have from one of my old med bags. And I say old med bags. So when I was given this, I stopped carrying mine and I carried this uh, in my off time. Why? Because if I use anything from this bag, I don't have to replace it. My job will replace it for me. And they are perfectly fine with me carrying it because that's what they gave it to me for. They don't care where I carry it. They don't care how I use it. They just want me to use it. Again, not for something silly, but in an actual thing. And, ah, oh, I'm going to have to blur that. Um... Now we have this whole bag of junk. I say junk because I kind of just stuffed things in here. Uh, so I have an MPA, a nasal pharyngeal airway. This helps give somebody a good airway. I have a splint. Um, opens up, rolls up, folds up. This is one thing that isn't in that bag that I'd like to see them put in it. Uh, here is what I initially had my IFAC in. I would carry this with me at work. Um, uh, it's very similar to what my uh, work gave me for my IFAC. They wanted me to carry this on my hip or whatever or keep it in the car. Why would I keep it in the car when I could have it on me? So I picked that up. I think it was $20. Uh, but have a bunch of ab pads and such. There's this training tourniquet. Um, I have a cheap training tourniquet. It looks very similar to a cat tourniquet. It's not. Um, this was, I think, a $12 tourniquet on Amazon. I would never trust this with my life. Um, I have it written on here that it is a trainer and that is a it is a bad tourniquet. That way nobody uses it. Then I have these. These are the SWAT uh, bandages. This is what will be going in there. replace the oleus bandage 
And then triangle bandages. These are good for slings with that splint. Again, my department provides it. I'll carry it. And then I carried this gauze. This uh, is rolled gauze. It is eight yards of it. Um, and I had this for packing, wound packing. Um, in that bag, I have MPAs, OPAs, things of that nature. Stuff that I really don't care to go over because it's not related to this. Um, and I think that is it. So that's the gear that I have. Um, I appreciate you guys going through this. I know this is a long video. Let me know what questions you have, your thoughts on everything. Like I said, I hope this video was at least somewhat in focus. Um, and then from there, uh, I just ask that you uh, share this, leave a like, comment, do something. Let me know that uh, this is something that you were interested in and that you found helpful. Um, if you didn't find it helpful and you thought it sucked, well then tell me. Um, I need to know because if I don't know, then I can't get better and I can't fix it. With that, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Look forward to that uh, Minute Monday video, and then uh, I hope to see you guys next week. Have a good one. Because the road to hell is paved with good intentions.